Welcome to the Oddity Shop, where the bizarre is always on sale. Welcome in, your eyeballs. My name is Kara, and this is Zach. This is the Oddity Shop. Hello. We tell odd, creepy, weird, sometimes funny stories. We think we're funny sometimes. Uh, we will eventually read you your own stories back one day, waiting on one more. Be in our first episode. Please. Please. Um, any topics that we talk about, all the descriptions will be listed on our website, on the show notes. So if you're interested in a little bit more of a deep dive. We'll give you the descriptions. She means references. What did I say? You said descriptions. <laughs> I think I said if you want more description. You said all of our descriptions will be in the show notes. Okay. It, 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 <laughs> I listen. mean, there will be a description of the episode in the show notes. You're not incorrect, but I just was helping you it's get to where you were going. very late in the day for us. It is later, but we'll get through it. What do you, what do you, uh, what's new? What do you have for me? Um, you're going to make fun of me, but Always? I, okay. You know, I never have time for video games anymore. I got the new Zelda game and mm. it is eating up every inch of free time I have. Is this the one that you forgot to like pre-order or whatever? I went to five stores. Okay. Because you remember. <laughs> I was so mean. By the fifth oh, store, yeah. I was getting desperate. I know I told you this already. What? And it was Walmart. <laughs> well, I'm getting there. Okay. Like, I know, but it's like the fifth store plus it's a Walmart. Oh, yeah. I've been to Meyer. I've been to Target. I tried Best Buy. Like, I'm out of options. Everyone's out of the game. I forgot to pre order it, of course. I remembered it at like 8 30 at night. So I go into Walmart and there's a family. It's a dad and like two young kids going over to the Switch game aisle. And I'm like, I know they're looking for it. So instead of looking to even see if they had it, I just went up to the guy and was like, hey, I need a game out of the case. I'm looking for Zelda. And he's like, oh, you're in luck. It's the last one. Then the look like these two faces. kids gave me, I felt I almost felt guilty. But how old do you think that they were like 14, 15? So like not like babies. They probably saved up all their money and they could go to Target the next day when it restocks or Walmart or wherever. It is. Sure, because it probably will restock right away the next day. It was. Everything online said you could pick it up the next day. You're a horrible human. I wanted it. Anyways, it's amazing. Great. I'm so happy. What about you? What's going on with you? Nothing really. But you know what? Um, I was listening to Morbid and they have a five part, five part episode. I'll say five part episode. Uh, five part episodes on H.H. Holmes. And I didn't realize how little I know about him. For being such a prolific, is that the right word? Prolific. Prol prolific. Prolific <laughs> serial killer. Like he's so well known and like. What are they doing? Like a section of the house each episode? No, I, I don't know. I'm only on, I only started two, but the, it's all back history and stuff. But I guess I just didn't realize and I was just surprised. That's really it. Nice. Nice. My deep dive into that. I really, I haven't listened to them in a long time. I need to get back into it. That one's pretty good, actually. I mean, I, I've been liking it. I still got three and a half more episodes to go through. See, instead of listening, I've just been playing Zelda and working on the plants. Okay, so I bought an elephant ear bulb because I didn't want to splurge on the entire elephant ear plant. So I'm going to try to grow one myself. And I, I do not have patience to go from seed to plant. Mm -mm. like not at all when you told me this like well I, I didn't have a response when you said you bought uh, the bulb i just ignored it i ignored that part of the conversation because i was like i'm not even getting in this into this with you yeah let's be honest in a few weeks i'll probably just buy the plant <laughs> give me the bulb then <laughs> give no, me the baby i'm gonna try Yay. i'm gonna try you can't have the baby all right do you have a question for me i was though? gonna say you kind of have a question though oh okay although you're tired and this one it might be deep Oh, God. Why do you always do this to me? <laughs> okay, so what was, like, your family's raising habits or style growing up? Was it, like, super strict or really easygoing? Like, Oh, that's a really good question. I guess I've never thought about what style. Maybe easygoing, I guess I would go with. Okay, so do you think the way that you're raised has a huge effect on you like i know it's like nature versus nurture right it's the, mm, the i hate the nature debate. versus yes that um i yes okay i feel like if you have a really strict home 
it can either mold you to be like a strict, like scheduled person, like whatever, or it can make you rebel. And if you're too loosey goosey, you could do the same things. You could just be rebelling all the time, or you could grow up to be like, I'm not going to be that way. Okay. Three parter question. (laughs) What do you think is more heavily weighted on like the effect it has on you? Is it like the nature side of it or the nature, the way you were born or the way you were raised? How long do you want to sit here? Um, you could just say it's a mix. (laughs) Yeah, I truly cannot answer that question because this is literally screwed me up in my brain on so many different times and occasions of thinking about it. So I guess it would be definitely a mixture. Okay. But also, I I agree too. I do. But then I do think that it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't matter. It's like the chemicals in your brain and the way that you are. It doesn't matter if you had the best life, if you were nurtured great. And I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's one of those things where it's just, there's so many factors that it's really hard to boil it down. Exactly. And unlike most experience experiments, like there is no really ethical way to like test. Right. So um, with that, we're going to be talking today about the Stockdale family band and their tragic tragic little story what the fuck have you ever heard of them i stockdale stockdale it sounds vaguely familiar but the family band i'm like what i'm gonna bet about halfway through the episode you're gonna know where it yep you've heard it before so anyways like i said we're talking about the stockdales their family bluegrass band and the tragedy that ensued after a brief time in the spotlight But first, we're going to start with some some family history. We're going to tell you a little bit about them. So in the late 1990s, the Stockdale family moves from a larger city to little rural Beach City, Ohio. The 90s. Right. It was. Yeah, this was 1999 when they moved there. So brink of the 2000s. In 2005, they started a small bluegrass band, the Stockdale Family Band. Really creative name. Um, they found limited success, which was, like I said, helped by a short time in the spotlight. We'll come back to that. Uh, but they did travel across parts of the U.S., won several regional competitions, and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about like the competitions and stuff too. So we're gonna come back to that, but let's kind of talk about this. Vaguely sounds from the family style. It's it's gonna come to you. I and I purposely wrote it in a way where it wasn't gonna be. Immediately obvious. So the Stockdales were a religious family, and the parents wanted to raise their kids to have a good work ethic, be religious, have high morals, and be upstanding citizens of their community. They definitely were on the more like conservative side, especially like the way they dressed, interacted with the community, you know, kind of typical like early 2000s conservative religious family. Okay. Um, so on the outside, they do look like, you know, just your normal Midwest family, maybe a little more, I I say the word conservative, right? Because it's in the way they dress, not like conservative versus, you know, gun toting conservatives, but more like, yeah, that's how I dresses with sleeves and not a lot of skin showing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's how I took it. But yes. So there might be a little more to their story though, than meets the eye. But first let's break down. All the family members. I was going to say, who's in this band? Who's in the band? Family band. We're going to start with Kathy. Kathy is the momager. She is the Chris of the group. Uh, Chris Kardashian. Sorry. Um, but Kathy. Chris, well, what is she now, though? Technically, she's Jenner. Chris Jenner. But does she, did oh, she yeah. marry Corey? It's like a conspiracy. So she might be Gamble. Oh, that'd be so weird. Um, but anyway, so we got momager Catherine Barbara Stockdale. She is in charge of the household, takes on the role of raising the kids, manages the band. She helps sell their CDs. And she is really the one who dresses conservatively, right? So she wears like the blouses under the denim dresses, uh, Mm. sleeves, you know, not this uh, dress goes all the way to the floor, like very rural Ohio. That's not the 90s, 2000s style I want. (laughs) No, no, no. She is married to Tim Stockdale. He is the father, also in the band, spends a lot of time at work, really conservative himself with style, definitely the patriarch of the family and head shot caller. Then there are four boys. So we have Calvin. He was born in 1989. He is the oldest of the siblings. He plays guitar and takes on kind of a lot of his dad's qualities. So like he is almost like the leader of the kids, right? Oh, my God. Then we have Charles. Charles is the second oldest. He was born 1992, plays the banjo, 
a mm. l- little bit more outspoken than his brothers. Um, Wait, what did the f- sorry? What did the first one play? Guitar. This is guitar, banjo. Okay. Yep. Uh, but you know, a little more outspoken, but still kind of falls in with the family values. Jacob is born in 1993. He is the fiddler. <laughs> Really good musician, though. He's actually won awards in the Ohio State Grand Fiddle Championship and is really musically talented. A fiddle championship. Yes. <laughs> then we have James. James was born in 1997. He plays the upright, upright bass, if I can say the word. And he's kind of been referred to by the family members as like the catalyst of fun of the family. Okay. Okay. So you can find pictures and videos of them performing. They're all wearing really the same ensemble. We got beige cowboy hat, beige slacks, but you know, like the high waisted slacks with the high pleats. Yep. Uh huh. Ew. Maybe high waisted is the right word for guys. High pleats. Thank you. Um, white button down shirts, right? All dressed the exact same. They always look really happy when they're playing on stage. That got these big old smiles the whole time. That you know, it almost looks a little bit creepy. <clears throat> creepy. Okay. Okay, so like I said, though, they were a really devout family. They did move to rural Ohio to instill good values in the kids and moved there in 1999. They bought a farm. So when they weren't performing, they were homeschooled by Kathy and they worked on the family farm. It wasn't. (laughs) Yeah, this was. I. Sorry. Go on. No, it's just. Why? So (laughs) they moved, remember, from the city to this rural area because the cities are really unsafe and they reminded the kids of this quite often. So on the farm, they grew their own produce, raised livestock, and basically lived off the land. They even made extra money by selling beef and pork to members of their community. While they did play a lot of shows and travel a little bit when they were off stage, they were pretty private about their early lives. That is until 2008. When they had the opportunity that every American family dreamed of in the early 2000s. Do you know what that was? American Idol? No. They were selected, (laughs) even better, they were selected to be on an episode of none other than Wife Swap. What? Okay. I'm trying to remember if I... If I rem- if I know this or not, but okay, I'm so sorry. Did you say that the band started really in 2005? Is that what? You- yes. And now yep. this is and 2003. Three years later, 2008, okay. they're on Wife Swap. Man, Wife Swap was. Is that still around? So you no, it is canceled. You can still watch it all on Hulu though. So I yeah. actually I watched the episode to get into this, and I watched like four or five more. <laughs> that was just such a wacko. I don't even know. Today, though, you are you like you watch this and you're like, there is no way this would stand. No. Especially with like how divided, you know, they always picked opposite style families and we're so, so divided today that like people would just scream at each other and they wouldn't even be able to film the episode. I mean, they still screamed at each other in 2008. So I just be honest. I just remember one episode with a little fat kid and they took his like candy away and he was like, he was, he was a like, good oh, debater. I'm, he's like, oh, I'm leaving. He was like the biggest little nerd I've ever yeah, seen. Oh, I'm packs leaving. his little I'm suitcase. Packing. Yes. I'm like, what are you? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So I don't have to explain the show to you. You've obviously watched it. But in case anybody doesn't know, what the show would do is take two like extremely opposite families, take the wives, swap their roles for a week. The first couple of days, they had to follow and live like the family they were living with. Uh, so follow their rules, do the things they do. Yeah, and the mom would write, write like write instructions or something for the other. Yeah. Mom. Okay. Yeah. So then they would do the rule change ceremony, where the mom who was staying with the family got to rewrite all the rules for the next few days and make the family follow that. And at the very end, they'd put both husbands and wives together in the same room and let them critique each other. It is so good. Uh, it's. I mean, like you said, there's no way that would stand today. And really, I don't even I mean, TV was a whole different ballpark. But yeah, it was wild. I'm going to I'm going to kind of quote some of Kathy's opening lines on the TV Lord show. Have mercy on my, soul. my life is centered around the home and the boys. I am the mother, school teacher, cook and band manager. I get the boys up and schedule their day from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to. Sleep. This is starting to come back to me. I don't believe in having idle hands or idle boys, so I try to keep them busy and teach them a good work ethic. (laughs) This is going back to me. Yup, I knew it would. Do they have a bus? No. Nope. 
I provide a safe and wholesome environment for the boys to grow up in, and I monitor and control the inputs into their life so they receive the right education. That right there should yeah, have been... that's yuck. ...a warning sign. It, it, right away, you see the level of control that Tim and Kathy have over their kids. Ew, okay? ew, yuck, ew. They're not allowed to swear, watch TV, play video games, listen to pop music, mm-hmm. or even go on dates, right? So the two oldest boys, 16 and 19, neither of them have ever been on a date in their life. They probably never talked to a girl. Kathy goes, other than mom, right? Right. She goes on further to say it's important to have complete control over their character and their education. That is a direct quote that she said on television. Say that to me one more time. It is important to have complete control over their character and their education. Their character? Oh, yeah. Oh, so, and that's the whole thing. So, you know, it starts off by showing their family. So they have this giant chore board. And literally, like they said, from the minute these kids get up to go to bed, Everything is scheduled. And they're getting up at like the crack of dawn, right? Sunrise to sunset. So they get tokens for doing chores, but they don't get a token for just doing the chore. The character has to be there. If they don't have the right attitude. 19 years old getting tokens for mom. Right? If they don't have the right attitude when doing the chore, they don't get a token. So it's more than just what they're doing. It's how they're doing it. What are the tokens get? What does the token get me? Well... (laughs) <laughs> For example, 20 tokens, which means 20 chores that you've done. Is this supposed to be in attitude. one day? No, no, you can stock them up. Okay. Um, They could be traded in 20 of them f- to listen to a radio show selected by Kathy. <laughs> a, okay. ra- a radio show. Oh, yeah. No TV, remember? <laughs> The episode does, it focuses on their lifestyle, it shows them performing on stage, working on the farm, doing countless chores, or basically laying in their beds. Um, They sing their prayers before mealtime, and everyone, the whole time the cameras are wearing or rolling, are wearing that big old smile. I'm sorry, though, if mom has that much control over you, those aren't genuine. No, but right, you can't not smile because you have to have a good attitude. I mean... She's probably beating the shit out of them, too. The house is really plain. It looks basically from the 1800s, modest furniture, modest decorations. And as they love to do on Wife Swap, they are matched with a family of the complete opposite, the Tonkovics. Okay. Oh, my God. That name just makes you think like, I don't even right? know. Tonkovic. We really don't need to focus on them a whole lot. The only one whose name we're really going to get into is the wife. Her name is Lori. Her and her husband are shown in kind of a dirty home. There you have a son and daughter. Each of their kids has a live-in partner. Is it is it dirty though, or is it just like messy? Um, borderline dirty. It nah, it's dirty. Oh, okay. Um, so the son Paul, he's an aspiring rapper. The daughter wants to be a centerfold model. <laughs> uh, well, she said she doesn't want to be a model like Tyra, but she would do like this, that, or maybe a centerfold. Like you know, she's got goals. So. Lori and her husband are shown partying with their kids. They all smoke inside. All they eat is takeout. Like, there's dirty dishes everywhere. It's, it's kind of gross, right? Okay. They seem genuinely happy. Now, obviously, the two families aren't going to get along. So let's talk about, like, Kathy in their house. Mm. She thinks everyone is immature, rude, dirty, and immoral. She's visibly uncomfortable around them, especially at a party on the first night. You can immediately see, though, she starts to revert to being rude, demeaning, and belittling when she can't get control over their actions. Okay. She also states that the family is slaves to TV and video games. Slaves? Uh, That's a big word. Bold. But you can see, like, right away, she uses fear to gain control, right? So the kids, because they live with their partners, they're going to get pregnant. And because they didn't save themselves for marriage, they are more than likely going to cheat on their spouses in the future. She sex shames them. I mean, it's really... I do. It's toned down. I do kind of remember that, yeah. So, I mean, she literally brings a priest in to try to make the kids get married right away if they're going to be living (gasps) in sin. I do. Okay, that I for sure remember. Yeah. How wild. Now, I know a lot of stuff can get played up for TV, right? But, like, I think this family is playing down. Because remember, they're really about controlling the image and they know what they can show and can't show. But if if this is what she's showing on TV. Right. No, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Lori's experience was a little bit different in the Stockdale home. 
<laughs> she also thinks the children are slaves, but they're slaves to their parents. Yes. She thinks the music lover is the dad and he's forcing everyone to join in. Mm -hmm. She starts off immediately on a bad foot by walking away during the singing of the prayers. <laughs> yes. So they don't love her right away, but she she's repeatedly very concerned about how isolated these children this, are. Yes, I do. I'm getting goosebumps, actually, because now I'm really remembering this and it's actually really fucking heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have goosebumps. Um, so, I mean, she is... She breaks down in tears a couple of times, has to walk outside the house. I mean, you can see she just feels for these kids. Sorry, you might get into this, but doesn't she all, maybe I'm thinking wrong, but doesn't she try to like find them hobbies each, like individual, like, or no, am I thinking different, of a different episode? One? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so Lori confronts Tim about not allowing the kids to make choices, have fun or laugh. So you can see Tim is already pissed. Like he is not used to being challenged. Um, and he says, I am not going to let the world dictate how I raise my family. If I let them make choices, have fun or laugh, bad things can happen. Like, what happened to you? Something had to have happened to these people. And, like, it was really hard to find information outside of the episode and what oh, happens after. Getting anything in the background. I mean, these people, while they had a performing band, their personal lives were on lock. Like, my guy, get a therapist. Right? So after not being able to get through to Tim, she meets with each of the kids and asks them what they would do if they had freedom. So she doesn't try Maybe to find them Maybe that's what I was thinking about. The youngest one can't even think of what he would do with free time. All he says is, well, I'd hang out with my brothers more. Well, because they don't have friends. They don't even know they don't what's know available. People. Oh, my God. This is so freaking sad. Uh, she, she breaks down again. She did ask the second oldest kid if you know do you ever think about dating he goes yeah well, sometimes i do but then i just have to think no and that's it i'm so sorry 19 16 what were the little ones so kevin was born in 89 it's okay don't worry 92 about it. 93 97 they are from 19 what did i say 1916 it would be 13 and 11 okay yeah i was gonna say like if i can do half math, that that's way. okay so yeah they're like little kids Oh, yeah. I mean, they're all, you know, above 10 and below 20. I'm just trying to picture my nephew, Zach, is 11. So he would be the same age as the youngest. Uh, uh, okay, so when it comes time for the moms to switch places, right, they put the new rules in place. Um, obviously, Kathy just tries to make everyone do chores and work on a farm and teach them values and, you know, the value of a dollar, which they, I, I think they learn a thing or two. Lori, she's like, she brings in a TV, a video games. Tim puts on the me that creepy smile and just tries to shut it down while laughing. You know, like that. I'm laughing at your idea right now to demean you. Yeah, no, yes, I do. But I'm thinking, like, does this woman just like beat the crap out of all of them? Uh, I don't think it's just her. Tim is not. But I think she might beat him. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's times where you can see that he is. He's the. Yeah. I definitely need to rewatch this episode now. So when she's talking about the video games, like these kids don't even react. They just kind of sit there looking kind of confused. She also tells the two oldest that they have to go on a date. Yikes. So remember Calvin, the one who's kind of like his dad, the leader of the kids? Uh-huh. He's like, oh, I want to talk to Lori about this privately. And like, I thought like, oh, he's gonna be excited. He literally sits out there and like is yeah. crying and saying, you're not going to tell us what to do. Yep, I remember. Sobbing. Ugh. He's a, like a mini version of his dad. And he's like, this is going to emotionally affect the younger kids. He keeps trying to like justify the control over protection. But that's all you know. Yeah. That's so it. somebody's coming in and oh, I don't know if you preface this, but these women only stay for a week. One week. Yep. So somebody's coming in and just like turning your whole entire life upside down and all your whole life you've been taught like this is wrong and sinful i'm sure and like you know whatever like yeah. i can't imagine how you'd feel and now you have this yeah person telling you it's okay to do these things and you know it's for a short time like that has to, especially for a 13 and 9 year old or uh you know 13 and 11 year old this show is not good it probably screwed up children way more than it the intent was i don't know hold on oh shit um so dad comes out next though and he says you will not have control of this house that he will sooner cut off the electricity than let them play video games 
Mm. They end up playing games, right? And Lori sits down with them while Did they're they playing them. and she know how? It was only the two youngest one. It was like, it looked like an Atari or something. Like, it wasn't like, you okay. know. <laughs> um, Jacob, his, like, almost his only line in the entire episode when asked about the video games, he goes, it offers no value. Mm. The youngest one, and one of his only lines in the show, is he just says, it makes me feel guilty. <gasps> Oh, these poor Now they look babies. like they're having fun while they're saying it, at least. But maybe in their head, though, they're thinking that the whole time, like, I'm just going to get reprimanded for this. The kids all on the other episode all had multiple lines each. Like, not a ton, right? But, like, Jacob and uh, James, they really only had a few. One or two. Um, almost like they were coached not to. Mm. So the two older kids, they finally go out on the date, and Calvin is... He's kind of eh about it, but the uh, what's the other one's name? I'm forgetting it now. Chris, uh, Charles, Charles, Charles. Did you say Crystal? Chris, I was saying Christopher. <laughs> I knew it was like a C H name. So I mean, and he's kind of the more outspoken one. You can see he kind of enjoys it, but it's it's still just super awkward. I mean, they it shows them trying to talk to these girls, and they just don't have any social skills. I don't know how old. Oh well, actually, nine eighty. I was. The same age as that one, because you said 89 when mm-hmm. this episode came out. Yeah. So. I, and I was I, born within months of Jacob, the second youngest. Right. So we were like 16, eight, like 16, 17, whatever. Uh, I think watching it then, we were just like, well, at least me, I remember this episode now. I was like, what the hell? This is insane. But I don't know if I could actually watch it now, to be completely honest. And honestly, as far as like the wife swaps go, their episode was a pretty tame episode right yeah but when you think about it now when we're when you older, think about it adults, now absolutely you're like wow that was truly heartbreaking yeah i don't think i could watch it i mean even laurie makes a comment that it, it was just very sad to see how they were being raised right that's what i mean it's just like heartbreaking the episode ends as they normally do really heated conversation between both husbands and wives but the tonka vicks laurie and her husband end up getting up and walking away because they just they can't oh, handle yeah. the stock bills anymore. I do remember that. Um, so Lori did make a comment. One of the few comments she made after the show ended, or their episode aired, whatever, that um, there was plenty that didn't make it onto the show that just completely broke her heart. Oh, I bet. Oh, I bet. Jacob and James multiple times said they didn't want to break the rules because God would get angry and they would go to hell. Jesus Christ. So... This is in 2008. For the next nine years, they keep the family band going. They really fall out of the spotlight. That is until June 15th, 2017, when they are forced back in the spotlight um, in a not so pleasant way. Oh, no. I don't know any of this. At this time, the two oldest brothers, Calvin and Charles, they had moved out of the home. The family band was still performing with the two younger brothers and a family friend and, of course, Tim, the dad. We do know on June 15th that James, Jacob, and Kathy are all home. The only information on Tim I can find is that he was not at home on this particular night. Wait, Kathy, James, so the two little brothers? James, and Jacob. So two little brothers and mom are home. Now, this is 2017, so at this point, Jacob is 20. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, the younger of them. And James would have been then 22, 23. That's fine. Okay, so they're... 20, but they still lived at home? Yes. Okay, so they're young 20s living at home Mom with moms there. Okay. Yep. So 4.46 a.m., the Stark County police receive a phone call that immediately hangs up. <sighs> they trace the call and found that it is coming from the Stockdale's residence. So they send out two officers. So the officers start approaching the house, and what they can see is somebody standing in the living room. It was unclear if it's through a door or through a window, and they hear a single gunshot. And they can no longer see who is standing there. Mm. They immediately call for backup and continue towards the house. When they get inside, they see in the middle of the living room is Jacob. He is on the ground. He's bleeding profusely from a gunshot wound to the head. Oh, my God. He's still alive. And emergency services are called. He tries multiple times to communicate with the officers, but they are unable to understand anything he was saying due to his injuries. Mm. The police move further into the home and find the bodies of Kathy Stockdale, aged 54, and James Stockdale, aged 21. So 21 is the youngest. Both of them in their beds, 
with gunshot wounds. What time did you say this was at? This is almost five o'clock in the morning. Four forty six oh, okay. in the morning is when the call came through. So by the time the cops got there, it's probably a little yeah. bit after five. Mm. It turns out that Jacob, the second youngest son, had completely snapped. On this evening, he shoots both his brother, his youngest brother, and his mother before turning a 20-gauge shotgun on himself and shoots himself in the head. I actually do remember this. Oh, my God. Horribly tragic. However, the doctors are able to save Jacob's life. (laughs) So he is allowed to heal before he was officially indicted and arrested in October of 2017. He immediately pleads guilty, of course, by reason of insanity. Mm. So while he pleads guilty, he never, never tells any of the police officers, any of the investigators or anyone involved any intent or the reason why like yeah what happened the life of his mother and his youngest brother so any determination of what happened is pure speculation right so while waiting for the murder trial jacob is kept in a mental hospital where he makes multiple attempts to escape (laughs) remember he went into the hospital in 2017 so the first escape attempt was in 2019 november oh my god he hides behind or like between stacks of book stacks of books mm-hmm. can't say it in the hospital library and the staff found him because they think he was trying to hide there until the library had kind of shut down and then he was going to escape okay he gets a little more clever so the second time a month later he tries to blend in with a group of people who were on their way out the door although he is a you know inmate basically in mm-hmm. a mental hospital and they recognize him immediately And he's not able to escape. In 2021, two years even after that, so now four years (laughs) since the incident, the trial is finally set to begin. The family has really been tight-lipped about the entire thing. They actually declined to speak in court when given the opportunity, other than to ask the judge to be lenient because they have completely forgiven Jacob for what he's done to their mother and their youngest sibling. (laughs) I'm sorry, but... You cannot want to talk because I wouldn't want to. We're going to come back to the the reason they're not talking and that's oh, sure. speculation. But So the only two comments I could find that uh, were public comments, one was made by Tim, the other made by the oldest, Calvin. Of course. So Calvin says in a statement, James, our youngest brother, has always been the center of fun in our family. He leaves behind many fr- many friends and a family that loved him dearly. My brother, Jacob, is still in critical condition, and we are praying for his uh, recovery as our family makes funeral plans and begins the healing process. So he made this comment. He doesn't say anything about his mom? Doesn't say a thing about his mom. (laughs) He makes that comment back kind of near when everything happened. Right. The only thing I could find that Tim commented was, Kathy has been my beloved wife of 32 years and a wonderful mother to our four sons. Really? She loved nothing more than being a mother and a grandmother. One of the older boys apparently was allowed to date. She had a strong love of learning and was passionate about her Christian faith, natural health, and organic farming. Now, funny that you made the comment about Calvin, because Calvin only mentions the brother. Tim only mentions the mom. Right, I was just going to say that. That tells me that these were scripted. Kelvin, you're going to talk about James. I'm going to talk about Kathy. You Here's think? what we're going to say. There's no way that no. two members of the family without having planned it. Do you know how I take that? Hmm. I take that as you're finally ridded of your crazy mom that has run your life. You're you're like, yeah, I lost my little brother. And now I technically lost both of my little brothers to this. That's how I take that. And then I take that, that I'm so sucked into my psychotic wife's, uh, I don't, control that, like, I don't even care about the kids. See, now, I I think you're right on Tim. I think you're wrong on Calvin, because if he truly believed that... If you were scripted, you should be scripted to say something about both that died. Yeah, I just... To me, it's more alarming that he didn't say anything about his mom. That's so weird. For the public but to be like, if he, he lost really at this mother. point was upset with his mom, he would have said something in court. He wouldn't have stayed so tight-lipped if it wasn't still Tim's control, I think. I don't think so. 
Your brain is so brainwashed in the sinning of your of all this stuff. You're going to talk ill of your mom? No, but the fact that you didn't say anything about your mom? I don't know. That's so weird to me. I think that that's, that just goes to show. Yeah. I, no matter what the actual outcome is, it goes to show there was a lot that was hidden. There's a lot I mean, going on. <laughs> especially if they're not talking at the court case, right? So speaking of the court case, let's get back into that. There's technically two two things here, two trials that they have to prove. The first is the defense must prove that Jacob did suffer from insanity. Mm-hmm. And the second then is the murders. Mm-hmm. The prosecutors do prove that Jacob is actually legally sane. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can see videos of this part of the trial. I actually found a short clip of it. It's during, you know, 2021. So it's half virtual court. So you're seeing like the court in the room and then Jacob's on camera. Oh, yeah. And as they are going over the findings of, you know, that he is of just mind, this kid just he his face doesn't move, his body language, just no reaction at all. So that's set to end the murder trial or mur my words tonight. Myrtle. Murder Myrtle trial. Myrtle, Myrtle. The murder trial is supposed to start two weeks later. That trial never comes. Because Jacob pleads guilty to the murder um, before the trial actually started. Was he instructed to, or this was just he went rogue and, or you don't? Know? I mean, there there was really no defense. His only defense was the insanity. Once mm-hmm. that's gone, he's already pled guilty or you know admitted guilt prior, so he True. has nothing left to stand on. Now, remember, the only thing the family said in court was to ask for leniency. So at the end of the day. <sighs> Jacob is sentenced to 30 years in prison, 15 for the murder of his mother and another 15 for the murder of his youngest brother, James. Okay, hold on. Number one, 15 and 15 isn't enough. But number two, you said that you think that it was weird or maybe weird is not the right word, but you thought it was like odd that they stayed so tight lipped during the trial or whatever. I think that you would. I don't think that you'd want to be adding fuel to the fire and the media is psychotic. And I just think that for me, if my brother horrifically like killed my mother and then tried to kill himself, I don't think I would want to talk to anybody. Except so the and Lynn, this isn't you, right? I mean, I do if, get if that. your mom was absolutely batshit crazy no, and I your know. your brother was about to go to jail for murdering somebody, right? I just still don't know if I There's would talk to no the way you could sit there and st- even to the judge and say, hey, my brother shouldn't be mm. going out to drive for this because my mom did yeah, this, this, and this. I guess maybe, maybe that in that way, if you're thinking of it that way. By them never saying anything, they don't sway the court in one way or another that yeah. Jacob was either justified in what he did or he was a monster and did that to their family. They just don't say anything and let it play out. Yeah. I guess if you're, I was just thinking like I would be mortified. I wouldn't want to say, but I get what you're saying. You Especially to, like, Tim. Tim is such a control freak. How does he keep his mouth shut? Well, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, after Jacob receives his sentence, the Stockdale family has since stayed relatively, not even relatively, just extremely quiet. They've never made any comments on the um, the murder, on being on the show, um, and due to their like reclusive lifestyles, any updates on the family or their healing is just non-existent. The only thing they said is they continue to mourn the loss of their younger brother and their family's matriarch as they mm. attempt to move on from the tragedy. Okay, but remember our girl Lori. Yeah, what'd she have to say after all oh, this shit? She she talked to TMZ. Oh, I bet she unleashed. I, I could only find one comment, but it was damning. Mm. So Lori says, when I switched the rules and I was going to let them have fun, let them have a television and video games and experience life at least just a little bit, Jacob ran outside crying. I went after him and I asked him what was wrong. And he said that his mom and dad would tell him he would burn in hell if he ever broke any of their rules. Lori goes on to say that God gives you free will, free will that these children did not have. They Mm -hmm. weren't allowed to make choices. And I think it just caught up to him. Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. I mean, so it's really I I, I mean, like it shouldn't matter, but I really want to know what happened that day. Right. Like, what finally? But why did he kill his brother? So I have a couple thoughts on it, right? Because they were sleeping. Because you said they were found in their bed? Yeah. 
So he kills his mother, he kills his brother, and then he turns the gun on himself. This is where I think that Kathy was not the one in charge, and that Jacob was doing this as a last-ditch effort to protect them from Tim. Totally speculation, I have nothing to back that up, but that is about the only thing I could think of, is that is your only escape. No, I don't think you're correct in the Tim part. I think they're equally psychotic, and I bet you she's more psychotic, but I bet you his thought was, if I'm going to do this and then kill myself, I don't want to leave my little brother. Like, I can still relieve him. Yeah, like, so the same thing, but I don't know if it necessarily is. (sighs) It's just I wouldn't, he didn't want to leave him with dad. Yeah. Only dad. Only dad. I just also, I want to know why, like, the two other brothers and the dad have never said said anything. They were just so quick to forgive Jacob. I don't think they were. I think that's something that you just say to um, media outlets. and. But that's the only thing they said in court to try to get him a lesser sentence. Well, maybe they didn't do it for a lesser sentence. They're just saying that. That's truly their brainwashed brain is that you forgive all family. And really, like, the sad thing is, is... On TV, we only see what they and the producers wanted us to see. You have to know there's so much more going on behind doors, both before and after the show. And based on the family, we'll never know what truly happened on that night. Oh, they were beat. There's no way that they weren't. I I mean, there's at least severe mental harm. The the physical is harder, right? Because they they were performing. They were on stage. They were in front of people. So you'd think... No, that's why they're wearing complete long sleeves, all long pants. Like, they never stared away. Well, the away. kids were, were wearing shorts and stuff. I will say that. Like, shorts and short sleeves. But you, you think the courts would have found some evidence on that, on Jacob, or even on the body of, like, the medical examiner? I mean, maybe once they got older, though. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's yeah. not as, but I just... Yeah, that's that's a wild one. I do remember that episode. I didn't I do feel like I do remember the whole like them finding him. How how horrible though is it that he survived? I couldn't even imagine living with myself after something like that. And and I mean he might feel no, relieved sure. too. Yeah. You, and that's the thing is we'll never know how any of them actually feel. Maybe we'll get like a deathbed confession from him one day. Right? I bet though he doesn't feel guilty only because I think he probably thought he was doing his little brother a justice. I think that. Right. And that's the thing. So they really... always refer to the the youngest brother as the catalyst of fun. Right. Yeah. So like that to me, that like screams innocence. And I don't I Maybe he got the brunt of whatever. I And once again, for everyone listening, we are speculating a whole lot. We oh, have sure. no we idea. But, about. but there's obviously something that happened. Now, you said in the actual episode, though, it did, it did say that about him being the most fun, right? Yeah. Okay. I was thinking if they didn't say that, that maybe they oh, were just No, sick. maybe that was in the comment afterwards. Only. Okay, so maybe that's just something that they're saying just to... Right. To... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We could, we'll could we sit here and, and come up with our own theories all night, but that is the tragic story of the Stockdale Family Bluegrass Band. Okay, so obviously you're thinking this is because of nurture. Oh, 100%. I think, at least in this case, what pushed him was nurture. But, however, we have three other kids who didn't murder anybody. That's where the debate gets. So he could have just had that little bit of a chemical imbalance. Not imbalance, maybe isn't the right word. That sounds. No, I think. Is it chemical? I don't mean that he's like... If I'm still up on my PC-ness, chemical imbalance is an appropriate way to say things. No, I'm not saying that's not inappropriate. I don't know if that's what I mean in this case. Like, Gotcha. I don't know. Like, he's the one that had, like, the most imbalanced, whatever you want to call it, to be the one that was pushed. Like, they were all treated the same, but he was the one. Now, here... Why were they still living at home? Yeah, oh, 21, I guess. Yeah, no. 26, I really don't think. So the other ones, it, I think the two oldest ones had gone to college. Wait, so you said they were, she was a grandma. So was one of the older ones married? They they must have, but like that comment about the grandma. Because I, I think they would have been like shunned if they had a baby outside of wedlock. The Tonkovics, I'm not going to lie. I found the half of them on Facebook and they seem like they're living pretty normal happy lives which is you know it's kind of funny because they were the ones who were the bad parents exactly the horrible lifestyle but they seemed to be okay and they didn't murder anybody and like i look back on that like because i went to both a very religious very strict school 
that was supposed to teach you, you know, the right way to bring you up. And I also went to a public school in the middle of the country where there was not a lot of rules, right? But it seems that some of them, and this is, you know, small sample size, just my opinion, but the people who were either kind of in the middle of that strictness and yeah. freedom or had more of it actually turned out to be better adjusted in life than the ones who weren't allowed to experience any of the world. Because then you go out at some point, you're going to leave your family and you don't know how to interact Function. with the world around you. Yeah, that's um, that's a doozy. We always say we don't end things lightly. So I found some light things to end for us. And other controversies that led to the end of Wife Swap. <laughs> Ready for me to unlock a memory? Yeah. 2009. Do you remember Balloon Boy? The family that had been on Wife Swap and then the kid went up in the balloon and it turned out to be all a giant hoax. Wait, I didn't know they were on Wife Swap. Yeah, they were a Wife Swap family. Wait, were they, they were the after? Storm Chaser family. No, this was before. And they actually blamed the Balloon Boy hoax on the fact that they were given a taste of the spotlight on the show and never had it again. You know what? That part does sound familiar because ultimately yep. after they did, okay, cave in. There was another couple who were on Wife Swap, but they weren't married. But they actually break up on the show, but break up for good after like the families come back together. <laughs> They're like, yeah, this is not, no. There was an aspiring model teen who filed a lawsuit for defamation because the show made her look so bad. Ooh. And one of the craziest ones to me, there's a later in the show before it got canceled, uh, which was canceled in 2010, by the way. Uh, so before any of the murders took place, <laughs> a family. OK, so two families went on, right? One was a straight couple. One was a gay couple. OK. And a man showed up instead of a wife. Because, you know, he was the wife of the family. Oh, I do remember this. Yeah, This family was like, this is our worst nightmare. They tried to pull out of the show and the show threatened to sue them. Mm -hmm. So they countersued for 10 million fucking dollars because of the emotional stress and mental harm that living with a gay person caused them for one week. Listen, listen, that's how I feel every time I live with myself night. every day. I'm like this gay. <laughs> I can't take him. Can I like sue myself for millions of dollars? <laughs> OK, how about this? Can I sue you? And no. And then what are you going to say? We split it. Then yeah. we split my money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know where you're going. The logic is very flawed. Hey, can you just give me half? Well, because when I thought about it, I was like thinking I was suing. And then I was like, wait, no, but I would have to sue you. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on. <laughs> We'll have to find it where it's like one of those things where people sue each other, but then they sue some sort of corporation instead because they know they're getting more money. You know, it's like, um, yeah, what? Um, God, I'm trying to think of an example of that. Now. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just what corporation say. can we sue? I don't know. We'll have to think about which one made me gay. I was just going to say what nature versus nature. Li I was now. literally about to say what made you gayer? What makes you gayest? <laughs> Alcohol. Oh my God. Can we <laughs> sue Tito's? <laughs> yes. Yes, we can sue Tito's for the limp wrist that it gives me. <laughs> oh my god just kidding we love you titos <laughs> <laughs> we do love you titos um but yeah that's it the show actually they've never commented on the stockdales again this was on tlc correct mm, i think so hold on i think it was tlc they had all the ragers this was on abc because oh, remember ABC? tlc was the learning channel in early 2000s and abc kind of had the the drama stuff until tlc really took it over did they ever go to tlc maybe like trading was trading spouses on tlc oh yeah trading spaces was and then i think trading spouses was, yeah you're, you're right you're right you're right but yeah so that's that's what i got for you this week i gotta go because i don't even know i gotta go fair you wanna you wanna say the thing hold on <laughs> real quick before you say the thing um we love you guys. We love love from you guys. Shoot us a review. Share us with a friend. We love love. We love love. We love love. Wasn't that um, Courtney? I just love love. How many times can we mention the Kardashians this episode? Yeah, it might have been her. Ugh. Okay. Now you can say this. Wow. Thing. Okay. So yeah, we love love. We love you. We love each other. And most importantly, creep it really oddballs. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.